Hello, this is Jordan and Nauker, and today I will be presenting a short podcast on pulmonary sequestration. This will be the first section in a larger series on congenital chest anomalies. Pulmonary sequestration is a segment of lung parenchyma that does not have a normal connection to the bronchial tree, and it receives its blood supply from a systemic artery rather than a pulmonary arterial branch. This condition was first described in 1946 by Dr. Price, who categorized the anomaly into intralobar and extralobar types. Intralobar sequestrations are the most common form. These receive their arterial supply from the systemic circulation, but have a normal venous drainage. The segment of abnormal lung is found within the visceral pleura, unlike the extralobar types, which have their own pleural covering. Most patients present with cough, increased sputum production, and pneumonia. Generally, half of patients will present by the age of 20. There is not a clear consensus as to whether intralobar sequestration is an acquired or congenital condition. Many think that intralobar sequestrations are acquired and are the result of chronic pulmonary infections and bronchial obstruction leading to hypertrophy of regional systemic arteries. The case for this is further supported by the observation that there are rarely associated congenital abnormalities. On the other hand, intralobar sequestrations have been diagnosed in infancy and even in utero, supporting the idea that this may be a congenital condition. Extralobar sequestrations have anomalous arterial supply and venous drainage. While both types of sequestrations are most commonly seen at the left lung base, extralobar sequestrations are usually between the lower lobe and the diaphragm, while intralobar sequestrations are, well, intralobar. Extralobar sequestrations can be found in a variety of locations, including the mediastinum, pleural or pericardial spaces, within the diaphragmatic tissue, and even in the retroperitoneum. Extralobar sequestrations present much earlier in life, often in the first day, with feeding difficulties, cyanosis, and dyspnea. Congestive heart failure and pulmonary overcirculation are also common complications. Occasionally, these sequestrations can communicate with the GI tract, and in these cases, they can have a similar presentation to the intralobar type. 65% of the time, extralobar sequestrations are associated with congenital anomalies. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia is the most common. Though pulmonary sequestration is classically divided into these two categories, they often will have elements of both and can be thought of as occurring along a spectrum of pulmonary anomalies, with normal vessels supplying abnormal lung at one end and abnormal vessels supplying normal lung at the other. Now I'd like to share with you two cases that illustrate pulmonary sequestration. The first case was actually discovered on a regular obstetric ultrasound performed at 34 weeks of gestation. On this initial image, the ultrasonographer noted this distinct mass within the right lung. On the axial images, this hyperechoic segment is more apparent and it's identified here with the green arrows We've also provided a green arrowhead that points to the heart for orientation. The color Doppler images demonstrate a distinct vessel that's arising from the aorta and feeding this abnormal segment. You can see the aorta as the larger red vessel at, at the bottom of the image. Here is another image that shows the arterial waveform of this vessel. And this last image from the ultrasound gives us another look at the abnormal vessel feeding this abnormal segment of lung. After this was picked up on ultrasound, the mother went on to have a fetal MR to further characterize this abnormality. This selected coronal image from the true FISP sequence nicely highlights the abnormality. The green arrowhead, labeled BPS for bronchopulmonary sequestration, is pointing to the wedge shape area of hyperintensity in the right lower lobe. Note that this segment is sitting superior to the much more hypointense liver. This next set of axial haste images will nicely demonstrate the abnormal lung segment and the feeding vessel. I'm first going to let the images play through once without the labels to see if you can identify these structures.
Now we'll go through the images a second time, this time with the key structures labeled. This patient was given a prenatal diagnosis of pulmonary sequestration. As for the type, we were only able to identify an abnormal arterial supply and weren't able to see the venous drainage, so we cannot say for certain if this is an extralobar or intralobar type. Though the majority of cases of pulmonary sequestration are intralobar, extralobar is clearly the congenital form, and there is high suspicion that this may be an extralobar pulmonary sequestration. It's also interesting to note that in this case, the abnormal lung segment was seen on the right side. In most cases of pulmonary sequestration, the abnormality is in the left lung. The second case is of a young boy who began having recurrent pneumonias at five months of age. On chest radiograph, this patient had a persistent opacity in his left lower lobe. The patient eventually had a chest CT for further evaluation of his recurrent pneumonias. In the coronal plane, you can clearly see the anomalous artery arising from the aorta and coursing towards this segment of abnormal lung. This was where the consolidation was appearing on the left lower lobe. Note how the segment of lung enhances, which is not what you expect to see on a typical pneumonia. These findings are also nicely visualized on the sagittal series. On the coronal and sagittal series alone, we can make the diagnosis of pulmonary sequestration. We've seen the segment of abnormal lung, and we've also seen its anomalous arterial supply. But on the axial series, we can also see that this segment drains into the left pulmonary vein, allowing us to make a diagnosis of an intralobar pulmonary sequestration in this child who's presented with recurrent pneumonias. Please visit our pediatric imaging wiki site, http pediatricimaging.wikispaces.com for additional podcasts and also interesting pediatric and adult cases in all imaging specialties.